achieve this. Uh, starting with the, sorry, uh, I'll start just to, uh, uh, to talk a little bit about my institute. Uh, I'm, I'm coming from the National Council for Scientific Research. So it's in French, it's the CNRS, the uh, Conseil National pour uh, uh, Research Scientifique. Uh, we have at the National Council for Scientific Research, we have uh, four uh, centers. Uh, one of which is the Center for the Remote Sensing that I'm coming from, and we have the Geophysical Center for the Earthquake and the Tsunami. We have the Marine Science Center. We have the Lebanese Atomic Energy Commission also. They are all under the umbrella of the uh, National Council for Scientific Research. We are considered as the scientific arm of the government. Uh, here in Lebanon, as you will, uh, as you will see, uh, Lebanon is a very small country. Uh, it is like a 10,000 kilometer square. So I don't know if it is like as a, as a, as a, as a uh, maybe a suburb or a, a city in, in, in India, but uh, we are a small country. Uh, though we have many, uh, or we experience many natural hazards like the earthquake, tsunami, landslides, drought event, floods, forest fire, and desertification. And you may ask me, uh, how come that you will have at the same time floods, forest fires, desertification? Uh, and this is due to the uh, geomorphological characteristics. So we have like, uh, uh, we have the inner areas that, that that can experience droughts and they are considered as a semi-arid areas. While at the, if you can see the mouse here, at the, uh, at, we have the coastal area here, we are, the, we are a Mediterranean country. So the inner areas here may experience droughts, uh, while here we can, uh, we can see a little bit of, uh, uh, because we have like, uh, we have snow in these areas and we have a high elevation. Uh, areas uh, it reached the 3,000 uh, meter above the sea level. So we have different types of uh, natural hazards that we can uh, experience. Uh, if we are talking about forest fires and other wildfires, they represent a major threat that causes serious damages in, in Lebanon. And it can be uh, considered that we have like more than 35 of the initial forest covers in Lebanon has deteriorated in the last uh, 50 years or in the last five decades. So we have a loss of about from uh, uh, the cover reduction of these uh, fire, uh, of these forests from 35 to 13% uh, in 2010. And then we have from 2010 this year, we are going to, to make our uh, like calculation after uh, one decade. So there are many fires that can be experienced. Uh, the most or the, uh, the, the fire season start from uh, May until July, uh, uh, sorry, un until late October. And it can uh, even extend till uh, December and January, as we can see from uh, when we have like different uh, fires uh, occasions in drought years. Uh, of course, one of the potential de determination impacts of, uh, uh, of the anthropogenic climatic change is increased wildfire occurrence. So high temperatures and recurrence droughts are strongly associated with an increase in the number of fires and the burn in a variety of forest types. In many cases, areas once burned and recovering their pre-fire conditions will be burned again. These circumstances clearly favors the progress of degradation of uh, the ecosystems that modify their structural, hydrological soil conditions, reducing the total biomass, changing the dominant vegetal uh, uh, species and affecting the land stability. Of course, the change in fire occurrence during the last decades closely reflect the socioeconomic changes, which is the overgrazing, the, the uh, wood, uh, wood, wood gathering, increasing the urbanization, of rural areas, and we can see these uh, uh, increase very clear on the satellite imageries. Uh, also, despite the fact that the increase of forest fire is likely related to the anthropogenic effect, but we cannot uh, 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 decline the effects of the climate change 
which are inducing the forest fire. And these comes from the extreme climatic events that can be correlated with the forest fire occurrence. For instance, heat waves induces large scales of fire, drought periods can cause forest uh, dieback, while the heavy rains may cause the soil erosion, and we can see it, and the landslides, of course, and we can see it in uh, 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 many areas in, uh, in the country. So if we are talking here about the early warning system, when we talk about the early warning system, we cannot, we cannot uh, 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 forget uh, uh, the satellite imageries, the, the two main uh, uh, pillars of the early warning system, which is the geospatial data and the uh, uh, remote sensing uh, techniques. Uh, and of course, when we talk about the effectiveness of the early warning system, we can say we have the main element, which is, first of all, understanding the risk. The early warning system itself, which is part of the geospatial uh, intelligence and the geospatial uh, information. And one of the most important things also on the main element, main pillar of this, which is the communication and dissemination. And of course, at the end, we have the uh, response capacity of the country or the uh, the people that are uh, uh, that that have to do with the, this early warning system. So, without these four main elements, we cannot say that we have an early warning system. And this is uh, how we started, and we started working on uh, this procedure uh, this year. So, uh, first of all, we have launched. The, what is called the SUNAR platform, which is the Sustainable Natural uh, uh, Environmental Platform of the Early Warning System in the country, which is uh, based on the expert center that we have, uh, uh, mainly from the research uh, institutes, scientific experts, shareholders, and uh, different ministries. We have partner labs in Lebanon and outside Lebanon, like we, were, we have been working with the NASA, with CESBIO, ESA, uh, the Shima Foundation in Italy, uh, the Maison de Télédiction in, in France and other French labs. We hopefully will have also a, a cooperation with the different Indian institutes. And of course, we have the funds that are com coming bilateral from, from our country and international, like the JEF, UN agency, the World Bank, and uh, other uh, bodies. Uh, of course, through this, we have the production center, uh, the SUNAR platform, which is the environmental database, the processing chain and dissemination. And we have these different uh, uh, parts. I will be talking about the forest fire and, of course, the active stakeholders uh, starting from disseminating the information and then reaching what is called the crowd uh, sourcing. If we look at this, we have the CNRS database, which is based on accumulation of information and research that we have been doing in the last 20 years. We have the satellite imageries. We have either through the, the uh, data pools or directly from the satellite using the image set. Uh, we have receiving station at the council. And we have also the what is called the, uh, uh, the meteo and other uh, uh, devices that are uh, in situ devices that we are uh, using like the snow monitoring, monitoring stations, which are con considered as one of the most important or uh, top technology, top-notch uh, technology in the Mediterranean area, these stations. We have the bound ratio that can calculate the, evapo, the actual evapotranspiration. Uh, uh, this system here is related to the Prime Minister Office, the DRM unit at the Presidency of Council, and then it is connected for the decision-making uh, during the crisis and it is this is the sonar platform as you can see and it is related directly to the active stakeholders that are ministries and we have like different tools and toys that we are working with like with the web the CNRS portal we have collectors we have mobile applications and we are working nowadays on the crowdsourcing in order to get information from the people that are uh, uh, on the uh, uh, in situ or uh, during the crisis. Uh, we have the main actors, if we are talking about the forest fires, we have the DRM unit, which is at the Presidency of Council, the CNRS, which is releasing every day uh, uh, what is called the, the fire bulletin. Uh, 
We have the Ministry of Interior Affairs that is connecting to the government. Just remember when I talked about the connecting the information and disseminating this information. So it should be disseminated to the governorates and to the uh, different municipalities. We have also the civil defense uh, that are uh, that takes in hand uh, defeating the fires and uh, for, for the forest fighting. We have the Ministry of Environment, we have the Ministry of Agriculture, and we have the Real Estate Affairs Department that we are working nowadays with them in order uh, to see what are the lots that have been like ignited or because most of these happens due to the lack of awareness or sometimes on purpose uh, they happen and we are going to put a mark on their lots in order to prevent them from because some people they burn it on on purpose in order to build in the area which is uh, classified as a forest uh, of course our approach starting because we are talking about the satellite images in order to input the the, the different uh, uh, satellites we can talk about the near uh, real-time data which is coming from the trmm uh, the trim the cosmos sky uh, cosmos sky map that is coming from the uh, uh, italians they have the italian constellation sometimes we are, of course we are working with the uh, uh, gmps and the other uh, we have the different indices that we work with with different type another type of satellites like the landsat the spot all the what all the, what you know from available resources that we can uh, work with and uh, we can uh, take indices we have the nearly time images that sometimes they are they are coming uh, when we have a crisis and we are processing this to get the fire danger forecast we have the vegetation anomaly index the fire detection the burned area identification and all of these happen in order to get the early warning system uh, we have the rapid response and we have the monitoring and we have the post fire assessment and this can be categorized before during and post the crisis in order to get this into uh, into one package we use a static database which is pre-fire during the, the 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 fire we have a dynamic and the real, near real-time data we have a system uh, which is called uh, uh, part of the sonar and we are using what is called the uh, uh, the risico module uh, with the with the uh, with the cooperation with the italian uh, shima foundation and we have the post fire uh, you know assessment using the different tools we have initiated for the civil defense uh, uh, a database a static database that can gather the information because the first time we started working with them in 2013, we saw all of them, they, they were uh, paperwork, they were dumped in the in the uh, uh, their storeroom. Uh, nobody is like there because, you know, the civil defense uh, uh, is taking care not only for defeating the fire or the firefighting, but for other like the rescue, the, 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 the search, the rescue, and they have uh, other operations. So we were able with the tedious work in order to separate these papers, in order to put them in a, in a proper database. And we were able to initiate like a statistical model in order to see in which and where the areas uh, they have been burned earlier. And with that, of course, with the help of these statistics and the remote sensing techniques. So we were able to plot in each and every uh, town and village where are the uh, uh, where are the data that has been uh, burned? Uh, now, with the new technology that we have, we have released uh, a dashboard showing in each government what's taking place, as you can see here, on a daily basis how these fires they are occurring in which uh, casa or in which district they are taking place at what day, what type of forest fire is taking place. And also we are connecting this to the uh, forecasting. So uh, it's a full dashboard that you can integrate and extract information in an integrated uh, way using all the uh, technology and the database. Uh, for the civil defense, we have opened an application, uh, an app. So whenever they are in the field, they can uh, put all the information without using the paperwork 
so they can uh, uh, put the information, take the photos from uh, from the uh, from the apps that we have distributed uh, to them, or they can use their mobile phone. Uh, they can log in and they can like uh, put all the information, which is in, in uh, like three sheets, but they are in the form of a drop-down uh, list. So whenever there is a fire, there will be a call. The the people uh, they will dispatch the you know the the people that will be fighting the fire, they collect the information after correcting the information, returning back. They use the internet that is in their in their uh, in their place in order to <clears throat> back up the data into the server or sync the data in their servers, and they will automatically be uh, gathered at the at, uh, the Sonar platform in order to to help them. Uh, to gather the information because as you know we need this information in order to allocate the area and in order to get the fire fire uh, risk maps that can help us in uh, in putting together the forecasting procedure as you can see here these are the models that take into consideration the fire risk map for the country taking not only the the the, the occurrence not only the type of the forest not only the age of these forests and their distribution, but also the socio-economic uh, uh, parts. Okay, that can help us in uh, in order to build uh, uh, a fire uh, risk map for the uh, country. Of course, this is categorized with, as I told you, with the analysis of the uh, uh, forecasting, because we get what is called the the the, uh, the fire index. Uh, the fire weather index uh, maps on a daily basis for it for us for the coming 72 hours so it is updated with the vegetation cover the fire potentiality map defining the new fire danger index and forest fire propagator this is the system how it works so we get information from satellite some of them uh, on three hours others on six hours on a daily basis and we can build up what is called the fire uh, weather index, as you will see here. So mainly we have uh, for the, the coming 72 hours uh, in, uh, information that is indexed in a model related to the air temperature, the dew point temperature, cumulative rain, wind speed, wind direction, in addition to the different information about the leaf area index, the uh, 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 the dry index, the, the soil, the temperature of the soil, the, the, uh, um, what is called the humidity of the soil in different levels. So we get all these information. They are modeled together in order to get what is called the uh, fire uh, index, weather index. So we have uh, observation for the last 24 hours. Uh, taking information from the in-situ uh, measurement stations that we have on the ground. We have the now cast, and then we have the forecast for 24 and 48 hours. So from this, we have products for the fire risk index map every, every six hours. We have the dead uh, fine fuel moisture conditions every three hours, rate of spread, linear intensity, effects of wind on the fire spread. So all these information during this crisis will help us in order to identify how we are going to, uh, to proceed. As you can see, this is the fire weather index for the three days. So it's ranging, this is from 9, 10, 11 of September uh, last week. Uh, we gathered this with, uh, with the fire uh, risk model that we have in order to get the fire danger index on a daily basis. And this is released, as you can see here, with the bulletin on a daily basis. This bulletin gives you the the fire danger all over the country and it is uh, for the next 72 hours this is today tomorrow and after tomorrow so this is uh, sorry it's in arabic because we are releasing this in, in our uh, language here uh, it has the information about the the, the hotlines for the civil defense for the uh, red cross and for the operational room in different uh, cadastral area. It has uh, each color give you an index and what the, the municipalities should do and how they will 
they should be prepared. The, these are the preparation, how they should do, and what, what does each color means. Uh, then we have, you know, the, this bulletin is of 24 pages. So after the first two pages, as you can see here for the whole country, then we go for each district where we have, you know, information and the level on each and every uh, uh, municipality. So it gives an indicator for each and every municipality. If we have the index high to extreme high, then what we have done, is, as you can see here, this is for another district. We have an application with the Ministry of uh, Interior Affairs that connects with the governorates and connect with the municipalities. So it, it gives a pop-up message on the phone of all the, you know, the, uh, uh, the municipality board and the head of the municipality. And also there is a call center, okay, with this app, they give a call to each head of the municipality to, to tell him that you should be prepared because the weather index, uh, the fire index for uh, your village for the coming 72 hours is extreme or high. So uh, uh, in order to be prepared and to take all the precautions uh, that he, he can do. Of course, anyone can log in through this and get the information on whatever village he can. Now we are introducing what is called the crowdsourcing to, uh, to this application. So each one on the ground can report and send us back the uh, information in order to get it. Uh, these are the fires per governorate for the, uh, this is today's, uh, today's statistics, as you can see here, between forest, agricultural land, grassland, and the total fires numbers. So we have reached to, to date uh, uh, 1,982 uh, total forest fires. Uh, of course, we have the forest fire propagator. So if we have a fire, we can help the civil defense in order to, as you can see here, uh, giving the information about the speed, the direction of the weather, and we have the morphological situation. We can tell them that the crown of this fire will proceed in that direction in order to help the forest fire uh, fighters uh, to be prepared and to get whatever information they, uh, they can. Uh, Actually, we had fires last, last year. Uh, these fires, uh, it was like in a one day, we have 128 fires. It always seven, seven, more than 800 hectares. They were destroyed totally. And this is the operational room at the prime minister office. We were here, this is the prime minister. We were like talking to him. Uh, we were showing how uh, uh, the index is, uh, uh, is showing us and accordingly we, we took at that day a proper the, the proper decisions that help us to uh, uh, to well perform and to uh, mitigate these uh, these fires and to extinguish these fires in, in, the, uh, in the fastest mode and it also helped us in order to operate and to call for help from the you know from the uh, from uh, surrounding countries uh, that helped us in defeating these fires uh, through their, you know, uh, airplanes, as the special airplanes uh, at that time. Uh, of course, during this, we were, it was in 18 and 19 October last year. So these are, seven, uh, as I said, over uh, 800, uh, almost 800 hectares. They were uh, between uh, highly se severely damaged and uh, to moderate. And these are the areas we were able to allocate them in order and we were able through different indices from the satellite images after the fire to assess the severity of damage through different indices. Uh, we were able in each and every village to, to say what type of damage and what type of land that was damaged, as you can see here. And of course, these are all the post fires that are done. Now we are using the Sentinel, you know, it's a 10 meter resolution, so it's a very high resolution. Every 10 days we can get image, everything is processed, everything is automated. So we can <clears throat> get the severity, the burning severity index, and we are able to allocate these uh, area in order later on to manage and to see how we are going to manage these forest fires. So, uh, uh, the last slide, yeah, this is this is the burning severity. 
as you can see that the MPR. So we were able to allocate them, allocate the areas that have been burned. So uh, this is in the last 13 years, as you can see here, we were able to process the information and to see where are the, uh, the forests that have been damaged. So we started from the very first beginning, from the pre-fires, from the forecasting, till the post-fires and assessing these uh, fires in order to make the uh, proper uh, solution to mitigate the fires in the uh, future. Um, I will end here and I would like to thank you for your patience and, and uh, hearing my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for a very excellent talk, a complete end-to-end -end system and almost in real time. Uh, I must uh, compliment you. It's uh, one of the beautiful system which I have ever seen. So extremely good. And uh, I think uh, you have also shown how uh, operational it is. Uh, today's data itself you have been showing. So I think it is really remarkable work has been done. Uh, Thank you. I hope you will mind uh, if there are some questions. I see. Uh, Sir, I've said two questions with you. That has yeah. been asked from the audience. Yeah. For your reference. Yeah. So the first question is uh, from Dr. Sandipan Das. What is the accuracy of near real time forest fire monitoring system? Dr. Chadi? Unmute yourself. Shadi, sir, you need okay, to Chadi. unmute you. Yeah, I lost because I have to screen. I lost. Uh, yeah. Uh, near real time, it depends on the on the type of satellite uh, that you are using. So uh, uh, we are using. Uh, I mean, for, for some indices, it's every three hours, like the fire spread and others. So it it can update us every three hours which is uh, when you have the fire, it is, it's more than enough for us in the, in the country, every three hours. Now we are working also on putting some sensors in the ground that can give us like a, a more real time information, not the near real time. So everything coming from the satellites, it's, uh, it's something called the near real time because it should have like a certain delay depending on the, the satellite, the technology, the resolution. But whenever you have like ground monitoring stations, which we are working now, so this is our plan in the coming uh, uh, one or two years in order to put pilot areas where we have like uh, uh, certain uh, towers with the certain sensors, like small sensors that could be uh, spread all over the forest in, in order to give you indication about the smoke that happens and uh, that can take place. And frankly talking, uh, whenever you get the information about these fires, the, the most important thing is the first half an hour because this makes the difference. So you can either defeat the fire and, and if you are at, at the time, if you are late, then it's really late. So you will get, it, it will be disastrous. This is what happened in, in last year. So they were late in taking, it's not late in detecting the, uh, the fire, but they were late in, in taking the decision what they should do. Would they uh, call the, the helicopters? Uh, because we do not have like uh, uh, the planes, the proper planes for the forest fires. We have the uh, helicopters coming from the army. So the military guys, they were late in getting the decision. This is why we had this uh, extreme events and it, it took uh, one or two days in order to Thank you. Uh, there is a, <clears throat> a couple of questions. The, the, basically, they want to know that the ash from the forest fire, whether it can make the land more fertile. Yeah, sure. The, 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 first, the first thing is when, uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, when, you, uh, when a fire, uh, when fire happens, the, the first recommendation that we say that leave it as is because the, the, the forest will regenerate itself. 
if some and sometimes you can see they go and they uh, they start replanting or doing uh, or interfering the human interference will damage this forest but if you leave it as is the the, uh, the forest will regenerate it itself especially in, in you know in a dense forest where you have all these biodiversity so any any human interference would cause damage as the damage that can cause the uh, the fires and of course if you leave it as is the ashes everything will will help to rebuild the uh, you know the, the forest and rebuild the, the the biodiversity as it was thank you dr Chai, uh, for very interesting and very complete overview of the for, uh, forest fire monitoring system uh, with this uh, we complete this uh, talk and uh, if uh, Dr. Atul Saha is ready, we can take uh, yeah, he, he is there, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Dr. Chadi, will you stop your sharing your presentation so that... Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Chadi. Yeah, Atul. Yes, sir. I will start. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Start from where you were left. <laughs> so this is, uh, I told, uh, different, uh, uh, there are techniques. So NDVI, stream flow measurement, intensity duration, frequency relationship, and automated flood warning system. So this is just uh, one uh, case study. Uh, this is a Landsat uh, uh, image. And uh, in the middle one is pre-flood and the right one is after flood. So this type of uh, monitoring we are doing. Then uh, microwave uh, uh, sensors are there and uh, it is providing very high resolution merged precipitation uh, and a temporal also resolution data. And this is just one of the example every month. You see it is very, very high resolution uh, and uh, uh, even temporal also it is very high resolution. So this type of uh, uh, thing we are getting from microwave sensor. This is another uh, 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 the water inundation area mapping using a central one C band microwave radar, microwave data. So Darbhanga Bihar, this is left side is 2nd July and right side is 20th July this year only. So you see how much area and the details of that is there uh, inundated in blue color. And this is uh, also, uh, there are... Uh, Artificial intelligence and machine learning is also uh, being used in uh, 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 with uh, uh, high resolution uh, satellite imaginary for mapping uh, the flood area. This is uh, one example of our Varanasi uh, around that uh, temple, how it is uh, flooded. And uh, so AIML, high resolution uh, satellite image, all these things uh, um, are integrated together. Then uh, drought is also, uh, uh, there are different types of drought, meteorological drought, when uh, there will be a scarcity of uh, the rainfall, then hydrological drought, then agricultural drought, and then finally it will re reflect in social economic uh, drought. And there are different uh, indices, uh, SPI, PDSI, NDVI, etc., to monitor drought. And uh, there are different models also. Uh, climatic uh, models, uh, hydroclimatic models, weak, uh, list flow, test list, CLM, ERIMA, etc., which are used, uh, and land surface temperature, etc., is uh, uh, used. So NDVI is the most important uh, uh, thing, which is cal calculated from visible and near infrared light reflected, and this is the formula NDVI is equal to NIR plus RED divided by NIR minus uh, NID, uh, RED. And now uh, in 2016, December, 
uh, government of india agriculture uh, ministry, department of agriculture ministry of agriculture has issued a new manual for drought uh, management and in that first is uh, first indicator is spi and we see that when it is scanty spi is less than minus 1 and uh, other so if the first criteria is applied uh, is uh, fulfilled then we see a step 2 for the indi impact indicators so there are different in, uh, impact indicators agriculture crop area zone remote sensing vci or ndvi deviations soil moisture and hydrology so out of these four uh, impact uh, indicators if three are uh, giving that yes then you have to go on the field and finally the intensity of drought will be uh, uh, decided by the state government with uh, block and other uh, initial officers uh, input and there is crop uh, weather watch group so this is monitoring and for information management and various uh, agencies imd and state governments and uh, mahanavis uh, uh, crop uh, forecasting center nrsc isro cwc and cgwb all are uh, integrated in one for this and all are giving different uh, things how much rainfall how much crop area shown how, what is the satellite based crop conditions stream flow etc and then finally drought is uh, decided then there are other cyclones and tornado which are also uh, monitored so this is just uh, three uh, different stages uh, stages of cyclone fallin uh, and here you will see uh, this is uh, on uh, uh, 7th december uh, top one then this is on 8th uh, sorry 7th october 8th october and then 10th october so how where is the when it is starting how it is maturing and how it is moving so what will be the speed of landfall and uh, what is the current uh, speed all these things uh, we can monitor uh, on regular basis and this is again another tsunami if there is tsunami so how much buildings how many buildings and other uh, constructions has been collapsed and all those things can be monitored then dust storm and heat wave also uh, using thermal infrared based imaging and uh, dust storm index and other things are there so this is one example of europe uh, uh, heat wave how uh, in 2015 how it was monitored and how it was uh, gradually increasing and uh, then uh, fire events uh, just now you have heard uh, a good lecture on this so this is the fire uh, occurrence in meghalaya in may 2020 so this is also uh, modis uh, optical data is being used to monitor this uh, event now i will come to what is the ministry of earth science initiatives uh, uh, in this regard so one major uh, when uh, uh, present chairman was uh, secretary one major initiative was started monsoon mission so first time Uh, this type of uh, uh, mission mode project has been started by government of india ministry of earth sciences and in this we have funded foreign scientists and foreign labs to work on monsoon so this was a uh, means a rare uh, thing which has happened and it has given lot of uh, improvement in all scale of uh, forecast from short range extended range seasonal forecast and even climate change a uh, center was also established and now we are uh, a report has been published and many work is being done on climate change also so this is uh, in addition to that we are having two very good computer system pratyus at iitm pune and mihir at ncmrwf noida and this is the uh, biggest uh, computer in india and it is uh, in top 100 uh, computers uh, in the world Uh, earlier it was in top uh, 10 also so this is a uh, four uh, petaflop at one place and 2.6 petaflop at uh, two place uh, second place so combined together so and this so this is the what mois has given uh, as a, 
uh, in uh, monsoon mission and this uh, high performance computing and this uh, has improved a lot uh, the weather uh, forecast and climate forecast now how we uh, we are providing uh, this uh, information to uh, stakeholders so first is the bigger one is climate trend and change which i have shown that extremes are increasing and what is there happening in the future and all those things then we come to so this is uh, means uh, for farmers it will be that what is the change pattern on rainfall and temperature so that they can decide they're changing their cropping pattern and etc then there will be seasonal forecast that this season monsoon season will be a good monsoon or bad monsoon yeah. so this is also uh, given then finally we are giving sub seasonal in next 15 to 20 days what is going okay. to happen so this will okay. set the all the operations and finally short range forecast 3 to 5 day forecast will give to go so this way from climate change to short range forecast even now casting also we are giving for uh, thunder activities and uh, uh lightning and other things so this is the one of the uh, assessment report from climate change uh, over uh, india this is first time this report has been uh, published by government of uh, india ministry of earth sciences and then there is another initiative which where we are giving seasonal forecast uh, to the south asian countries saskof uh, and this initiative is also taken we are uh, mostly the expenditure is uh, uh we are bearing uh, ministry of earth sciences and we are giving forecast to uh, uh pakistan bangladesh myanmar afghanistan and maldive nepal bhutan and all our neighboring country and uh, this is another 20 days ahead forecast this is one example of 2013 monsoon when june was very good and up to 20 days in advance this models uh, we we were able to predict uh, uh this uh, uh, good monsoon in the june similarly in 2014 there was bad monsoon in june and this was also pre well predicted up to 20 days in advance that june will be dry so this type of uh, things were not earlier this is possible now due to monsoon missions and high performance computing activity this is the recent uh, uh, forecast uh, uh, and uh, Yeah, you will uh, see that uh, uh, ampan uh, strike probability so how accurate this is one is the observed black and this is the uh, forecasted how we are accurately we are forecasting now even cyclones and this so <clears throat> and this is now uh, one good thing that now farmers are saying that we are getting weather uh, better weather forecast and we can plan our uh, activities and uh, now sowing the seeds and and then we are uh, we, otherwise you could have spent a lot of money and labor so that much we are so while my profits has not gone up dramatically technology helping me to reduce my losses so this one is a very good uh example from a farmer from haryana uh, this is uh, published uh, in news uh, paper and then finally we are working on the development of multi hazard early warning system for floods and droughts and other uh, things and there we are uh, risk uh, knowledge uh, we, we are gathering to identify hazards vulnerability climate trend risk metadata then monitoring and warming and then dissemination and communication and finally response capability uh, so build the local capability and uh, then integrated so one example we i we can uh, say that due to heat waves in uh, 2015 uh, around 200 2500 people have died but now due to ndma and uh, uh, india meteorological department and various uh, uh, government agencies since the forecast is available now up to 20 days in advance and uh, for, to act on 3 to 5 days in advance so the heat due to heat wave the death has been reduced to 20 or 30 in uh, recent years so this is a big uh, means achievement uh, of this and uh, finally uh, the way ahead is operational use of remote sensing of extreme events uh, and damage assessment 
So this is uh, strongly depends on the number of available images, their type, and integration of weather data with GIS can address many under, underlying issues and help in resource planning and restoration. So GIS allows easy sharing of coordinate information so the policymakers can build long-term resilience and extreme. And now the new technology, drone technology is also coming and we have to take advantage of that. So this is uh, uh, to, to the field and find controls makes it easy to navigate. So drones give a close inspection of the assets present at the site and can even take very clear photos and videos. So all these things uh, due to remote uh, and geospatial technology uh, we are uh, uh, utilizing and we are getting mitigating. So as I have shown you, the number of deaths has decreased dramatically due to climate, uh, hydroclimatic hazards in the recent years. So this uh, credit goes to better forecast from the Ministry of Earth Sciences and from the uh, National Meteorological Agencies and also geospatial technologies. Thank you. Thank you, Atul, uh, for very elaborating about how the forecast improvement has helped to understand and provide the necessary advisories to all stakeholders for mitigating some of the hazard, especially uh, related to monsoon. And it is really creditable to give a forecast almost three weeks before, which can make all the concerned people ready to face the mitigation. And also the farmers, how they are getting benefited by it. So thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, any questions, sir? Some questions are there in our chat box. Yeah, I will just see. Uh, we are looking. We have uh, asked participant. So uh, I don't see any questions. Yeah, how? Uh, yeah, I received one question, sir. I'm sharing with yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. There is one question, Atul, from Doctor uh, Vidya. Vidya. Uh, how new drought manual to mitigate the drought risk assessment? Yeah. Actually, uh, there are several issues uh, regarding drought. So earlier it was mostly uh, dependent on India Meteorological Department's rainfall data, how much rainfall is there. And, uh, and we were uh, giving that if it is for a particular region, if it is less than minus, uh, less than 80%, then it will be drought and uh, then. But there were several issues that even uh, if uh, there is, a, because 80% of rainfall is also very big amount of rainfall uh, during the monsoon season. So if this forecast was given uh, in advance and mitigation has been done. So there is one example in 2015, even it was a severe drought of this century, but food production was not that much less compared to uh, other years. So the thing is, so only declaring that it is drought and then people and uh, different agencies will come for compensation and all those things. So therefore this drought manual in 2016 has come that we have to see all these things. Then we have to go and verify on the ground. What is the crop condition and what is this thing? So this manual has three stages and it is very good that uh, uh, we are uh, now able to assess uh, uh, very accurately the uh, drought compared to earlier. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Atul. There is another question. What measures can be taken by government to overcome the urban flooding? Yeah, there are several uh, the political uh, things also. We cannot uh, say much on this, but if you, I give you one example. In the Bangalore airport is on flood plain. So we, even government buildings are coming on the uh, th those regions which are there to control flood. So, and there are several private uh, uh, buildings and builders. 
so all these are responsible for so at one place there was a flood some 5 4 years back in gurgaon over one crossing it was inundated some 3 4 feet 5 feet water was level was there nobody was knowing. earlier never it has happened but what they did wherever the water was going all the channels were closed by high rise buildings so these are the things which has to be uh, taken into considerations and government uh, there are agencies which are giving that the, uh, environmental how impact assessment and all those things but uh, development and other things are also very important so uh, it many things come so we have to be very careful uh, whenever we are doing development work uh, and we have to uh, means uh, not uh, ecologically and all those things we have to see also i can <clears throat> add uh, uh, the government has implemented a urban flood warning system in chennai yeah. uh, which takes care of lot of forecast and it's uh, already operational and now bombay also will have the similar system so government is quite keen on to develop the system what atul said the issues are there and these all are built in a model and uh, so whatever the channels are blocked or whatever the drainage everything is uh, taken care of uh, atul there is another question which states will be affected by flooding more in future yeah that uh, uh, but uh, western side is now western india is getting uh, more uh, wetter and wetter maybe Uh, some new area in the western side also will come uh, means uh, grow for the flooding but uh, the regular flooding in uh, uh, eastern part of the country will be there so yeah uh, the other question is uh, during that amphan how the early warning system of imd helped in uh, mitigating loss of life and property so actually not only during amphan all other cyclones the early warning system is very much uh, uh, accurate now and uh, from uh, even uh, now you see a system is uh, uh, forming in bay almost 10 days in advance uh, it was uh, indicated that there is a probability of a system forming in the bay so this is low pressure system for the monsoon uh, it is not cyclone but the thing is now uh, from 10 days in advance or even uh, more than that the cyclogenesis is being uh, predicted and then as we go close and close our prediction so the thing is exact heating at this uh, landfall some 7 days in advance is not possible but as we go closer and closer so the what will be the speed where it is going to and then due to that is speed uh, of uh, wind and uh, uh, what and rainfall uh, uh, amount what will be the impact so all these things are being shared and uh, we are giving to this to disaster uh, ndma and uh, different uh, Uh, stake managers and they are doing it. so early warning system is very uh, means effective in uh, recent years yeah we'll take one more questions how avalanche and landslide can be monitored by geospatial technology yeah that uh, <laughs> that can uh, be monitored but uh, i am not yeah. expert of that so <laughs> now i can i can answer see basically what is done in case of landslide is uh, the slopes uh, stability is measured essentially through geospatial data and then the triggering mechanism that means there are two triggering mechanism one is the earthquake and another is the rainfall now earthquake cannot be predicted but as uh, atul has said that rainfall predictions are done and pretty accurate what kind of uh, intensity and the total magnitude of rainfall we can know that which area are likely to get a landslide so that is possible 
as far as avalanche is concerned, uh, the, again, the main thing is the slope there itself and the amount of snowfall instead of the uh, rainfall. It is the amount of the snowfall which is able to predict and then you know which are the likely areas so the avalanche is uh, predicted. So in all these cases, the basic data comes from satellite and then the other ground data is very critical to understand the stability of slopes. And then uh, the triggering mechanism is introduced to find out which area will likely to be get affected. <clears throat> yeah. So I think uh, there are no more questions. So I would like to thank uh, both the speakers for their uh, excellent talk. And uh, I can uh, summarize that uh, Dr. Atul uh, mentioned about how the remote sensing data is being used and assimilated into various forecast model, both short-term extended range and seasonal, as well as the climate. And then the output, which is coming, how it is useful in terms of say cyclone or a rainfall or a monitoring a drought. And uh, this information, how it has been useful to the ultimate farmers or the other stakeholders. So it was a very good presentation and I compliment uh, Atul for that. The second presentation, <coughs> Dr. Chadi made the extremely good uh, system, the end-to-end -end system, right from the collection of data, its analysis, its uh, uh, con I mean, conveying that information to the concerned people and what kind of uh, measures they have been taking and also monitoring continuously that where the fire has occurred at a very precise locations that count what happened after the response is taken and then the mitigation. So it's a beautiful system from end to end where the remote sensing data, the communi uh, communication technology, the computing technology, the information technology, all that, how it is well integrated to provide the, uh, or the monitor and control the fire, which is extremely good. I must compliment Dr. Chadi for very good presentation on this. So, and the last, I think the participants, uh, I understand more than 250 participants and uh, they were very active. And uh, I see there are a lot of messages of appreciation so I must compliment the participants. And the lastly, Dr. Singh, who has conceptualized and organized and his team to do this, and also uh, to give me an opportunity to chair the session where I learned uh, quite a lot what is happening around the world. So thank you very much, Dr. Singh. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for that uh, this session. In fact, that... Uh, you have narrated that the whole session you have narrated very well. And uh, thank you uh, to all the speakers. Uh, don't miss that the tomorrow session, uh, which is going to be on G governance, uh, or we can say the E governance mm -hmm. on the geospatial technology, which is going to be chaired by uh, D. Datta, uh, head NRDMS, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. And uh, go, speakers are uh, senior director from CDEC and uh, uh, professor from Delhi University and uh, head from MRSAC. So thank you all of you. Uh, thank you for uh, being with us for this wonderful session. Thank you, Chadi, and thank you, Sahaya sir, for being here. Uh, and we will be in touch in future also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar.